हेलो एंड वेलकम टू ग्रामर क्लास टुडे रिलेशन इज द पार्टिसिपल इन इंग्लिश ग्रामर बट व्हाट इज द पार्टिसिपल यू सी अ पार्टिसिपल इज अ वर्बल एडजेक्टिव इन अदर वर्ड्स अ पार्टिसिपल इज बोथ अ वर्ब एंड एन एडजेक्टिव इट इज मेड फ्रॉम अ वर्ब बट यूज्ड बोथ एज अ वर्ब एंड एन एडजेक्टिव अ पार्टिसिपल मे बी आइदर द थर्ड फॉर्म ऑफ अ वर्ब or the fourth form of a verb and it may function either as a verb or as an adjective in the sentence so we understand that a participle is basically a non finite verb either in the third form or in the fourth or ing form but it may also act as an adjective describing a noun or a pronoun in the sentence so now the concept is clear a participle is made from a verb in the third or fourth form and it may act both as a verb as well as as an adjective in the sentence now let me tell you that there are two types of participles namely the present participle and the past participle the present participle is the fourth form or the ing form of the verb for example returning home he took a bath here returning is the ing or fourth form of the verb return and here it is modifying the pronoun he so being a verb it is also acting as an adjective to modify the subject he hence it is a present participle in the sentence now look at the second example don't jump of the running train here running is the ing or fourth form of the verb run it is describing the noun train so in spite of being a verb running is also acting as an adjective here so running is the present participle in the second example now what about the past participle it's the third form of the verb and we make the past participle by adding ed or en or t or d to the base or root form of the verb now see the examples of past participles on your screen insulted by his boss he quit his job insulted is the third form of the verb insult and it is also describing the subject pronoun he in the sentence so insulted is the past participle in the second example the chair is broken broken is the past participle of the verb break because it is describing the noun the chair and when the participle acts purely as an adjective it is called the participle adjective now we know that the participle is a non finite verb so the present participle is used in the continuous tenses of the verb with auxiliary verbs such as am is are was were will be shall be etc for example they are playing here the present participle playing is used in the present continuous tense we were watching tv here the present participle watching is used in the past continuous tense so the present participle or the fourth form of the verb is used in the continuous tenses of the verb in the same way the past participle or the third form of the verb is used in the perfect tense with the auxiliary verbs have had or had for example past is the third form of the verb pass so it is the past participle used in the present perfect tense i have seen the movie here seen is the past participle of the verb see and used in the present perfect tense so we understand that the participle functions as a purely non finite verb when used in the tenses now the past participle or the third form of the verb is also used in the passive voice with the auxiliary verb be he was wounded in the war 
या वुंडेड इज दर्ड फॉर्म ऑफ दास्ट पार्टिसिपल ऑफ वुंड एंड यूज इन दिंपल पास टेंस पैसिव वॉइस अ लेटर विल बी रिटन रिटन इज द पास पार्टिसिपल ऑफ राइट एंड ही आर यूज इन दैसिव वॉइस ऑफ सिंपल फ्यूचर टेंस so as you can see the participle is a non finite verb in the tenses as well as in the passive voice but it is a verbal adjective when describing a noun or a pronoun now from the examples on your screen we may observe that a participle may come before the noun or the pronoun it describes that is attributively or after the noun or the pronoun called predicatively for example i have a talking parrot now here talking is the present participle coming before the noun parrot returning home here returning is the present participle coming before the subject pronoun he to modify it but i caught him stealing here stealing is the present participle coming after the pronoun him to modify it she is very caring here caring is modifying the subject pronoun she so the participle may come attributively that is before the noun or the pronoun it describes or predicatively that is after the noun or the pronoun it describes well we have already learned about the present participle and the past participle but what about the perfect participle having plus past participle is called the perfect participle For example having completed his education he got a job here having completed is the perfect participle having taken my breakfast i went to office here having taken is the perfect participle obviously the perfect participle denotes the earlier of the two activities in the same sentence in other words the perfect participle shows a completed state or action of the subject noun or pronoun now let's learn how participles are used in the passive voice well in the passive voice we use the past participle or the third form of the verb after being similarly we use the past participle or verb 3 after having been this is the passive use of perfect participle for example being tired i decided to take rest here yeah, being tired is the passive use of past participle tired having been arrested he confessed his crime this is the passive voice use of perfect participle now a very important segment of this video participles help us join a pair of sentences or contract or shorten a sentence this is the practical importance of studying participles this is why we should study participles now on your screen we have a pair of sentences he sold his flat he left the city forever now i am going to join these two sentences using a perfect participle having sold his flat he left forever he having sold is the perfect participle with which i am joining these two sentences in the same way another pair of sentences i saw the tiger i started screaming here i am going to join these two sentences using a present participle seeing the tiger i started screaming here seeing the tiger is the present participle now a few more examples as to how we can shorten or contract a sentence using a participle while he was taking his breakfast he received many calls in this sentence uh, there are two clauses but the first clause while he was taking his breakfast can be changed into a present participle to contract the sentence taking his breakfast this is the present participle phrase he received many calls so while he was taking his breakfast he received many calls becomes a much shorter sentence with the help of the present participle taking his breakfast he received many calls in the same way he rose early and went to school rising early he went to school
Here the present participle rising is replacing the clause he rose early to contract the sentence. So now let's study the absolute participle. We have seen that we can join or contract uh, a sentence uh, using a participle. So we combine two sentences with different subjects with the help of an absolute participle for the first sentence. So if there are two sentences with their own different subjects, we can use the absolute participle for the first sentence to join them. For example, the sun set, here the subject is the sun. The farmers returned home. In the second sentence, the farmers is the subject. So the subjects are different. Now how to join them with the absolute participle? The first sentence will be replaced with an absolute participle. The sun having said, now this having said is the absolute participle, the farmers returned home. Now we have another pair of sentences here. The match was over, this is the first, the players left the field. Here the first sentence will be replaced with an absolute participle because both the sentences have different subjects. The match in the first sentence, the players in the second sentence. The match being over, here being is the absolute participle replacing the first sentence. The match being over, the players left the field. So remember, the absolute participle is used only if the two sentences have different subjects. Otherwise, we will use the present participle or the perfect participle. Now for some common errors in the use of participles, known as unattached participles. For example, grazing in the field, I saw some cows. Now who was grazing in the field? So it's a wrong sentence. I saw some cows grazing in the field. This is the correct sentence. The cows were grazing in the field. Being a rainy day, the school was closed. Now, what was a rainy day? The school? No question. So the sentence is wrong. The correction is, it being a rainy day, an absolute participle, the school was closed. John went to school rising early. Who rode early? The school? The sentence is wrong. Rising early, John went to school. This is the correct sentence. So it's clear that the position of the participle in the sentence is very important. It should be as close to the intended noun or pronoun as possible. Otherwise, there will be an error of unattached participles and the wrong noun or pronoun will be ridiculously modified. Now the use of participles as prepositions. There are some participles, present participles, that are also used as prepositions in certain cases. For example, regarding, considering, including and so on. Regarding my qualifications, I beg to submit the following. Here, regarding is used as a preposition. There were some 50 people on board including the crew. Here, including the present participle is a preposition. So that's it for today. If you liked the video, please do subscribe to my channel for more grammar videos. Thank you very much.